LiveWire, I'm Mary Lemire. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being spent in Somerville right now, much of it on development projects, building out infrastructure, fixing things around the city, potholes, roads, sewer system, you name it. And these projects are going to shape the city for decades to come. So how do you feel about it? How do we know that the money is spent wisely? How do you feel about the lack of housing? Do you support building more apartment buildings? Should we require all of the apartments to have parking spaces? How do you feel about replacing parking spaces with bike lanes? Are you a renter and your rents are skyrocketing? Have you heard about or can you stay on top of emergency hearings that we're having around the city to discuss all of these things and give public input? It comes down to how do we find out what's going on in Somerville? And quite frankly, it's very difficult. The only locally owned independent newspaper is the Somerville Times. Otherwise, I see discussions on social media. Um, we get emails from the school or from the city but we really don't have any investigative journalism going on right now to really get to the bottom of things. So there's a local initiative to actually address this, to get money, to fund hiring professional journalists, as well as provide training and equipment for residents who can create their own local media to inform the rest of us about things that they care about. And the founders of this initiative called the Somerville Media Fund are Kat Powers and Jason Premis. Kat Powers is the executive director at the Somerville Media Center, and Jason Premis is the executive director of the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism, and he's also the um, executive editor and associate publisher of Dig Boston. Kat used to be the editor of the Somerville Journal. So I had a chance to catch up with them to talk about the need for journalism, the current state of journalism, and what they're trying to do about it. To talk about the crisis of journalism here in Somerville, we're very, very lucky to be joined by Jason Premis and Kat Powers. Um, Kat Powers is a former editor of the Somerville Journal and is now executive editor of the Somerville Media Center. Jason Premis is executive director of the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism. He is um, the editor and publisher of Dig Boston and does a whole bunch of other things here in Somerville as well as across Boston. So Kat, I'd like to start with you. Tell us about what the Somerville Journal was like when you were the editor and what has happened to it since then. Oh, back in the old days. Um, so <clears throat> Somerville Journal was, uh, when I was there, it was a 125 year old newspaper and one of a few outlets here <clears throat> in Somerville. Um, we had uh, myself, an editor. We had two full-time full reporters. We had a halftime swing reporter that we shared with our uh, the bigger newspaper in Cambridge, which was um, 150 <clears throat> something years old. Um, we had uh, resources in a like a regional hub that would do things that we you know like uh, well it would paste up pagination it, the physical making of the newspaper, and we had some physical resources that we uh, shared, um, <clears throat> you know when it came to uh, you know we had a shared office we shared uh, a photography staff, and uh, I had a freelance budget so that I could employ. Uh, a guy who knew all about fires and showed up at every fire, I could employ him to, you know, shoot some front page photos of disastrous fires going on in the city. Um, so what, you, what about what years were these that, um, that you had this? Well, the, uh, I started there as a freelancer in 1993 when uh, it was owned by the Dole family. And there was an actual physical plant where the, the newspaper was put together. And all of this, uh, I believe I left in 2012 when uh, there were dwindling resources, but you know, there were still a couple of full-time staffers there. Okay, so compare that to what's happening now. And full disclosure here, I read on a, um, uh, on a list that Dan Kennedy, who some may have heard of um, put together that I am one of just over 400 people that still subscribe to the Somerville Journal. 
<laughs> and I just got a letter about the recent change. So tell us a little bit about um, what that change is. Well, to kind of give you some context of what that 400 means, uh, when I was a newspaper editor and we were we were doing some rather uh, sensational things. I remember that the local access station scout doing a big story about the fact that I had the quote of the word scumbag across the, the you know, that, that issue sold out 10,000 copies. Um, so now we're down to 400 subscribers. That's a big decline. That's a big um, decline. The Somerville Journal, as we knew it, does not exist anymore. It shares resources with uh, the neighboring community of Medford. Lovely as Medford is, it's just, it's, it's very, it's a very different environment over there. So um, having one person cover the, uh, the stories in two towns where, you know, those of us just a generation ago who read the Summerfield Journal would have been reading the work of three or four people. That's a really big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I'd like to do is come back to what are some of the things that you would have covered that you would want to cover now. But first, I'd like to um, cross over to Jason here and tell us about your experiences now with running an independent newspaper, Dig Boston, um, Binge, which is the nonprofit, and then the Somerville News Garden Project. <laughs> well, it's busy, <laughs> but, um, but a struggle. I mean, you know, we're operating um, in an environment where with Dig Boston, we just had to shut down our print operation again, uh, basically due to um, economic problems stemming from the pandemic, where we're just having trouble getting display advertising because most of our traditional advertisers are public facing businesses. And even though, you know, um, uh, Dr. Fauci just said that we're kind of not in a pandemic anymore in the US, but kind of are, which was sort of confusing and I don't think very helpful. Um, as far as business is concerned, small business, we're in a pandemic still. Um, and when it comes to clubs and restaurants and stuff like that, business is not back fully for most of them. And so they're not advertising, which then affects DIG as a commercial newspaper's ability to put out a print edition. And while one might, might ask reasonably, like why still put out a print edition? Like, you know, obviously the Somerville Journal is not gonna now, um, when, uh, part of their merge with the Medford Transcript to become the transcript and journal with half a person on either side, right, in Medford and Somerville, um, is you know is is cost, right, and a question about who's still reading print. From our perspective, print's very important. We still reach a lot of people that don't um, don't like to consume news online. Uh, older people, but not just older people. And yeah. um, we also, um, you know, have people that are just out at clubs and at bars and they want to see what's going on. So they pick it up. So that's yeah. gone now. That's gone. Yeah. And so that's obviously, so as you just pointed out, it, you know, not a problem exclusive to any particular newspaper. So talk a little bit about the Somerville News Garden Project, because yeah. that was something that you did under the, the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism, but you right. picked Somerville. Why did you pick Somerville for this project? And what is the mission? Well, my partners and I began the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism uh, almost seven years ago in, in uh, June of 2015, I'm sorry, July 2015. And um, uh, well, I, that's when I got involved a uh, month after my partners. And um, we acquired uh, Dig Boston a couple of years later. And so over the course of four, the first four years of doing Binge and then also Dig, um, it became quite evident that um, more and more communities were losing their local news organizations. So we, we, we became interested in, in like uh, trying to experiment with uh, in one community because we couldn't handle more than one. And we couldn't do Boston itself. We just thought it was too big and even its neighborhoods were too large. We thought Somerville would be good. Um, it's about, you know, not too big, not too small. It's still quite diverse in pretty much across every metric. And um, it was clearly losing its, its um, news infrastructure kind of by the death of a thousand cuts. And we can go over the different news outlets that existed and now still exist and how, how well they're doing, but it was clearly going down. So we got, we decided like, let's call a community event and see if people are interested. And in February, 2019, we, we did a community forum at once, which now is no longer a club, you know, 
and is trying to become a club again and um, on, on Highland. And we were gratified when 115 people showed up, including representatives of 20 civic organizations that we invited. And uh, we had 15 journalists there and the folks just told people what they thought wasn't getting covered. And so that was a, a signal to us that we should try to do a project here. And within a few months, we had started what, what we, we called the Somerville News Garden because we figured what's the opposite of a news desert? A garden. So we started a volunteer organization. And uh, go ahead. Go and ahead so, and ask more so, so the mission of that, from, from, the, from what you've said, is to shore up and enhance local journalism in to, Somerville. To see if it can be done. Okay. Can you sort of stop the, the rolling collapse? of you know, a, a news infrastructure in a community, and then maybe even reverse it, maybe get it back towards where it used to be. So if we set the benchmark of around the time when Cat started at the journal, when you know, the journal was, a go was an independent newspaper and a going concern, right? Um, and there were other publications in town like the Somerville News, which then split into two essentially, uh, became the Somerville Times and then um, Billy Torres thing. And, um, you know, um, can we get back towards what the news infrastructure was like in a city like Somerville in that period? And if okay. we can, yeah. by hook or by crook, we've come up with a model that maybe could be replicated in other communities, which is what we're interested in. Okay, so you two have, you two media moguls of Somerville oh, yeah. <laughs> have come together to form a nonprofit, the Somerville Media Fund. Um, so I'm wondering, so, so clearly, Jason, you know, you've talked about journalism and, and, and that. Kat, what are you doing at the Somerville Media Center? So what, was, what is it that you're trying to get out of the media fund, you know, in terms of what you're currently doing and then what we would like to do that you think Somerville really needs? So when SCAT started in 1983, it was people who wanted to get their views on the air. They thought that they had, well, I mean, they are Somerville folks, right? We all have opinions here. We, uh, we believe that we have the same uh, footing as, you know, Walter Cronkite or Dan Rather, whomever was, uh, you know, forgive me, this is 1983. Um, they wanted to get their, their views and news on the air. And indeed, some stuff that went on in the SCAT building it became, you know, statewide national news. Um, we just, we want to be in a position where we can continue that tradition. We do have funds when it comes to cable access, but, you know, it's, it, the cord cutters are more num numerous. Uh, cable fees are dwindling. We want to make sure that we can, we want to build on what we, that tradition tradition that we have and keep it going and make it sustainable. So if we can fund that, if we can come up with a way that, uh, you know, where we can sustain journalism, I just, the model is, is, the model that worked for the journal is broken, right? When you had a prop, you know, when your uncle died without a will, you'd have to take out an ad called classified, uh, you know, in, and, in, you know, in, and the classified, or if you moved, if you're looking for a roommate, and we're all looking for roommates in, in Somerville, right? You, you no longer pay for that. That that model is completely broken. The reason that you would go out and buy a newspaper because you want to know what your kid is having for lunch, because you know if 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 they have chicken nuggets again, you're going to scream. You, you you need to you you those basic information that that doesn't exist anymore. That's that's what funded journalism. Mm -hmm. So we need to find something completely new. Um, can we do it at an access station? We've done it in the past. Can we beef that up so it's something that actually supports democracy in Somerville? I think with the media fund, we can do that. So let's just assume that we could get, you know, 5,000 people to have monthly subscriptions of, you know, 20 bucks a month, you know, or 15, a Netflix subscription. Um, what, and, and you guys then would share in that revenue what would you do with that money? Because that's, you know, it's, it's like, is it community things? Is it people making their shows? Um, you know, Jason, you started the Somerville Wire, you know, where you're actually, you know, hiring people to write um, articles. Jason, what would you do with that money? Well, I mean, we, we need more staff. 
right, to do what we're what we've started to do, right? Um, we uh, when we started the Summer of a Wire, um, we would call it product. The Summer of a Wire publication, online only, um, in uh, February of last year. We we had the funding from from um, funders and from individual donors to hire uh, an additional halftime person to run that operation, like as a reporter, right? And then I would edit it, and that's how we did it. So that was Shira Lashroy. Um, but we then struggled to, to find money to bring her on full-time. And in not being able to do that, of course, she got a, a better job offer from boston.com. So we, you know, we, we applaud her, right? We, we want right. everyone that works with us to do well, but we, we, we need money to like have that full-time staff person just for Somerville. We need money but, for- But the um, staff person to write articles, right? That's what you're talking about. To write about articles, is yes, but also to help yeah. with the news garden and some other stuff in Somerville that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and fundraise, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, well, yeah. So, but from the from the perspective of the somebody in Somerville who's paying their 15 bucks, right. you yeah. know, so that they have, have the articles. So yeah. tell me, um, Kat, what would you, what, what would the Somerville Media Center do? Is it buy equipment? Is it um, pay for training? You know, what would be the things on your wish list? I want to be able to uh, pay staff so that we could educate people in how to do their own shows. Um, and in the case of journalism, it doesn't mean here's a camera, have at it, and we'll show you how to edit what you got. It's talking about uh, what is news, uh, how to create balanced viewpoints, how to um, you know, how to, how to tell the truth to power, that is not something that is really natural to a lot of folks. You know, people get, um, you know, master's degrees in journalism. We can, uh, we can do some of that training. Okay, so first of all, the Somerville Wire is somervillewire.news, right? Yes. Um, so we just wanna make sure that people know where to go. And we'd love to talk, you know, just I'd love to say, what are a couple of articles or things that you think really should be covered that are not being covered right now. And we only have a couple of minutes left. So we want to talk about that and then where people can get in touch with you. So Jason, just tell us a couple of topics. Um, I mean, I would, I would just say in general terms that um, to do proper political coverage and uh, coverage of economic developments, um, you know, we, we, we need dedicated staff to be able to do investigative reporting. And we cannot do that right now. So right, right now- we're but doing... what would what would they investigate? Like what would be the first thing we, you would we... give someone to, you know, to, to go look at? I can't talk about one thing, so that's out. Because um, oh. it's still just a two. <laughs> well, this here, is the problem. The what should you go ahead, Kat? We have, we have yeah. once in a generation kind of development going on here in Somerville. Right. Um, who is taking over what parcel for what reason? is going to shape how every square functions in this community. But they're really, really basic things. Who decides where the bike lanes are and where they go? Absolutely every car rider, driver, pedestrian, bus rider, cyclist is going to be affected by that. And it's not truly clear to the public how, who chooses the bike lanes. I mean, right. there are just very fundamental things that would support democracy in Somerville. If we that's all, right. if we all knew what we were discussing. That's right. Yeah. So the question is for anybody who's watching, is it worth 15 or 20 bucks a month for you <laughs> to have somebody looking at this stuff and then reporting it out? Is that, is, is that worth it? So, I mean, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. Obviously we can yeah. talk about this um, many more, you know, many other times, but Kat, what would be, if people want to learn more about what you're doing at the um, Somerville Media Center or get in touch with you, what's the best place for them to go? SomervilleMedia.org. I'm at director at SomervilleMedia.org. And of course, check out Somerville Media at SomervilleMedia.fund. Thank you very much. And Jason? Yeah, I just want to stress, um, we've already mentioned SomervilleWire.news, of course. That's the best place for some of the people to look as far as news goes. And yeah, SomervilleMedia.fund is where you can donate and, and you then donate to both Binge, uh, Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism and at Somerville Work and to the Somerville Media Center at the same time. So it's kind of a one-stop shopping center for donating to journalism in Somerville. Okay, and repeat that website for donations? SomervilleMedia.fund. 
Okay, thank you both very much um, for sharing your thoughts and hopefully this will take off and we'll find out what's going on with all that land. <laughs> thank you so much. Us get the word out. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.